Let's bring in Democratic Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. He is chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, which oversees FEMA, the agency responsible for helping the CDC to coordinate vaccine distribution with the states. So let's start there. How, how would you rate how distribution is going across the country? Um, it, it seems like there are some hiccups. Uh, well, there are uh, hiccups. There's, there's no question about that. But, uh, the work is uh, to try to smooth that out as quickly as possible. Certainly, we're pushing FEMA, but I can tell you the Biden administration is certainly uh, pushing FEMA to come up with a national strategy, which uh, they've been implementing. Uh, we uh, saw a big change uh, with uh, the new president. You know, in the last administration, uh, every state was pretty much uh, left to do whatever they could. They were left on their own. Uh, that's not the way that you deal with a national emergency. Emergency. FEMA needs to have coordination uh, uh, across the, the country. The Biden administration has been focused uh, on that and particularly making sure that there's visibility as to when vaccines are going to be available. In fact, I had the opportunity to bring this up directly uh, with President Biden uh, at the White House at a meeting we had uh, recently. I can tell you he was uh, focused uh, on that completely, understood that you can't just drop vaccines off on a Friday and say this is what you're going to get for the next week. That's what we saw with the Trump Trump administration. He understands that you've got to tell uh, folks, so uh, this is what you're going to get not just next week, but the week after and then the week after over the next three weeks. So that's the process that's moving forward. Uh, you're seeing more vaccines being manufactured. I'm so excited uh, that uh, President uh, Biden will be in Michigan here today. I'll be with him later this afternoon at the site that is making uh, the vaccine here in our state. They're continuing to make more as they continue to bring more production uh, online. Uh, but of course, now we have a uh, issue immediately uh, because of the weather events that have occurred across uh, the country has certainly uh, disrupted uh, some of those supply chains. But uh, once we get back on it, uh, I can tell you that uh, I know the Biden administration is focused uh, on this uh, and FEMA is responding uh, to that focus uh, from the president. Senator, as you know, Senator. the distribution of vaccines is one of the major elements of the American Rescue Plan, that $1.9 trillion proposal that I know you support uh, to get the economy going again, but also to get vaccine and supplies out to the country. What is the fate of that? That's a big number, $1.9 trillion. A lot of Republicans say there are pieces in there they just can't vote for, including a $15 minimum wage. Are you open to negotiating and to pulling pieces of that out? President Biden, in fact, a couple of times now has conceded that the $15 minimum wage hike may not live, it may not survive. In this package, he might pursue that uh, somewhere else. Do you really think $1.9 trillion is going to clear through this Senate? Uh, I think it's essential that we do that. Uh, we have to be bold uh, and big. My colleagues uh, uh, agree with that. You know, you mentioned the vaccine distribution, for example, one that I'm following closely, uh, overseeing FEMA from Homeland Security. Uh, in that package is roughly $50 billion uh, to uh, help uh, uh, distribute uh, the vaccines, to set up sites. You have FEMA. In fact, FEMA coming into Michigan just uh, this week with additional resources to help state and local governments uh, with the actual distribution facilities, setting up over 100 across to the country in order to get uh, more vaccine in the arms of individuals to make sure the supply is transparent uh, as we go forward. Uh, that's uh, one critical piece of this. But when you look at the fact that too many families are still struggling to put food on the table, a roof over their head, our, our small businesses are struggling to, to stay alive, to be able to survive, to get to the other end of this. Uh, we know that we have to be bold. Uh, we have economists all across the country from every kind of persuasion saying uh, the, the risk is being too small. It, the risk is not going too big. Right now is the time to put that kind of stimulus into the economy, that type of help for individuals from an economic standpoint, but also to put resources to deal with the public health aspect. So uh, it will pass. Uh, we're hoping to have Republican votes, but I, I think it's really important to remember that that uh, this does have bipartisan support with the American people. Public yeah. opinion polls are clear, as well as Republican mayors and governors, others who say we need to go big, we need to be bold. Senator Elise Jordan's here with a question for you. Elise? Senator, switching gears slightly, but the same topic, because this fallout is all related to the coronavirus pandemic and fallout from the Trump administration. You're part of a group of senators who are asking questions about why the postage is and why the post office is still delayed with so many deliveries for Americans around the country. And can you talk about 
what is happening there and why is Postmaster General Louis DeJoy still in his position now that Biden has taken office? Well, it's uh, important to, to remember that Postmaster General is actually uh, hired by the Board of Governors. So it's uh, that is a separate body. Uh, and that Board of Governors right now is not uh, fully populated. There are actually a number of open seats. It's going to be one of my priorities in the committee to make sure that we get that board uh, uh, fully staffed to make sure folks are there doing their job. But there's no question that we need to have major reforms with uh, the Postal Service. It's a top priority for me and my committee. Uh, my colleagues uh, in the House so uh, plan to take up a hearing very shortly uh, on this issue. Uh, we're asking the Postal Service to present to, to us their strategic plan for the future, which is a number of reforms to streamline operations, but at the same time, make sure that you're maintaining service. To me, that is absolutely critical to remember that the Postal Service is a service. It uh, provides mail to every single address in America every single day, but it has to do it in a timely and efficient uh, manner. And that's going to take some uh, some legislative action, and we're certainly committed to, to doing what we have to do to support uh, those efforts uh, going forward. Senator Peters, uh, Al Sharpton, as, as you uh, are, are in Homeland, Chair Homeland, uh, the Homeland uh, Committee, in terms of uh, overseeing FEMA, what uh, have been, has been put in place to make sure that underserved communities that are disproportionately not getting the vaccines, what is being put in place by the committee and to make FEMA give you a plan that assures that there's going to be fair distribution? And second to that, as you know, uh, that there's a hesitancy problem in the black community. What has been done to make sure that as you distribute it, that you have people that can address that and convince people that vaccines are the way to go. Because we, we hear the, uh, uh, the administration saying we're going to send it directly to pharmacies and hospitals. And as you know, all across the country and even in Michigan, you have many communities that are deserts when it comes to pharmacies and hospitals. Uh, absolutely, Reverend, and, uh, and that has to be addressed uh, given the fact that we know communities of color are disproportionately impacted uh, generally by this uh, COVID uh, virus. Uh, that means we got to get distribution into those uh, communities. That is part of the, the FEMA plan to set up uh, direct distribution sites uh, through FEMA and to help uh, local efforts uh, in terms of additional personnel, support staff, uh, logistics uh, to go into those communities. I will tell you, with the, with the Trump administration, it was incredibly frustrating because they were not even collecting the data necessary to know where critical supplies were going when it was clear that communities of color were not getting the supplies necessary to deal with the magnitude uh, of the crisis uh, in those communities. Uh, that is changing. We're getting that information out. Uh, I'm working actually to create a department within FEMA that uh, actually deals with uh, underserved communities and communities of color and understand that whether the crisis is a pandemic or a flood or, or a hurricane, uh, it's those communities that tend to get hit in a disproportionate fashion, and we have to treat uh, that uh, uh, in a way that it provides even additional resources. So we're seeing that happen now with the Biden administration. Uh, it is uh, stepping up. We're collecting that information. And we know we've got to make long-term structural changes in the way that FEMA operates going forward. So this doesn't happen, uh, never happens again.